met, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Diamond from Gamerhouse EU, and today I'm bringing you my first look review of the game called Feria. Feria is one of the newest upcoming games which happen to be a mixture of a tradable card game, or TCG for short, and a board game making a very interesting and addictive 1v1 fusion. When I say TCG, you probably imagine games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Hearthstone and whatnot, and it's nothing like it. But just to point out the direction this game is going, I can say that the two games that come any closer to my mind are Magic the Gathering and Scrolls, which are in no way identical to Feria, but these are the games that I could recall when I tried Feria for the first time. There is one thing that I'm very satisfied to report to you guys though, is that the only RNGs you will ever get from this game are the card draws and whether you start first or second. That's it. Done. You will not get a card which says destroy two random creatures or toss a coin. If you get heads you win the game, if you get tails you lose miserably. No, this will never happen. The game is purely focused on making tactical decisions and that's why I think that this will be a perfect tournament game and definitely the best board game I'm ever willing to replay indefinitely, live, with friends, once it's available. Screw you Monopoly! The developers objectify the purpose of this game into three sub-goals. Shape the battlefield, collect resources and destroy your opponent. If you ever decide to dive into this game, your general gameplay will consist of placing different types of lands, each of which have their own benefits, gathering resources, positioning creatures and structures in a strategic spot where they could use their full potential, and investing your action points wisely every turn. It may sound difficult as I say that now, but trust me, it's really not once you get into the game. Once I reach the 40th minute mark of the game, I already learned and knew how to play the game in general, including how to plan my moves ahead, how to spend my resources effectively, how to protect my objectives, how to predict the most obvious moves of my enemies, and trust me, I'm not a very smart person. By the way, that's one of the main goals of the developers, to make a simple game that's easy to understand on top of deep gameplay. Hearthstone is having the same concept, but that's about it. In Feria, you need to make way more decisions in a single turn than in either other TCG or board game for that matter, since you need to consider quite a few things which make the game more complex, but in no way complicated and boring. You'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. Let's cover some other general stuff first. Good news for the cheap frugal bastards like myself out there. <laughs> I'm joking, I spent a fortune on League of Legends already. This game will require only one time purchase to access the game. No microtransactions, no free to play, nothing to boost your performance in game or give you any advantages over the other players. And the only way to grow your collection of cards is to simply play the game. The developers promised that the only way they could ever allow microtransactions into their game would be simple cosmetic stuff. Well, again coming from League of Legends, that's bad news. Enough empty talking though, let's have a look at the basics and some gameplay of this game. Once you get matched against another player, the game decides whether you go first or second and gives you cards to start with. If you don't like the cards that you draw, you could request a redraw, but you can't pick cards to keep just as you can in Hearthstone, so you should be really careful and thoughtful about it. One time I didn't like my hand and after a redraw I got 4 cards that were not very good starters. So unless each and every card in your hand is not helping you at all, then you shouldn't redraw. Or you should build a better deck for that matter. <laughs> but that's another story. In the top left corner, you can see your name along with your level and ladder rating points. Under that, you can see from left to right the amount of cards in your graveyard, the amount of cards in your deck, the amount of cards in your hand, and the 20 minute timer. If you run out of time, you start losing health points every turn and you won't be able to regain more health. Next to that, you have three circles. The green one represents the amount of action points, which are used to draw cards, collect gold and build land. We will come back into that in a bit. The yellow one is your gold, which gives you access to the more basic cards. 
And finally, the blue one is your Feria, a special resource required to play game-changing cards or higher tier creature structures that spawns on four set locations on the battlefield. Each of these locations can hold up to three Feria points at a time, and once they are all collected, a new Feria point is generated every three turns during the day. In the top right corner you can see your enemy, in the bottom left corner you can see your action palette. Here you spend your action points that we talked about earlier. Each of these 7 actions cost you 1 action point. Again, the coin is your gold and it has no limit of how much you could hold whatsoever. However, we can't say the same thing about the cards you can have in your hand because you can only hold 7 cards. The thing in the middle is your basic land. You place that land on the empty hex tiles around your already existing land and then you can place one of the four additional lands as an upgrade. I'm putting a note here, you can't place any of the four lands straight away, there must be a basic land there first. You have lakes, forests, mountains and deserts. Each of these provides certain bonuses to creatures and structures. What's more interesting is that there are event cards that can build additional land, destroy land or move yours or your enemy's land, which you will see its effect in a bit. Moving on to the bottom right corner, that's your clock or the so-called morning, evening, night cycle. Each turn the clock spins moving on to the next phase. And just for a reminder, once it's daytime, four feria points will spawn, one for each location. These three cycles are not only affecting the atmosphere of the game, by the way, but they are also interacting with a lot of cards, which provides one more mechanic into the game. If we have a look at the cards, we can see casting cost, which can be gold and or feria, among with the land cost. Below that is the name of the card and the art. By the way, many cards are currently using placeholders instead of the final pictures, but they still look satisfying in my opinion. Below that you can see the power and or the life of the card, below that you can see the card effect if it has any, and finally you can see the card's rarity and type. There are 5 rarity levels from common to legendary and 3 types of cards, creatures, structures and events. Now let's talk about the combat a little bit, because it's probably not a surprise that this is the time where you can show your amazing tactical decisions. The most obvious thing is that the goal of the game is to destroy your opponent's core by reducing its health down to zero. Trading creatures in this game is totally different thing. No, it's not like Hearthstone. Generally the first creature to attack that has higher power than the target's health will destroy it without taking any damage in return. Now, that's not always the case. A lot of cards have strike back ability, which do return damage just like in Hearthstone. But I'm pointing that out because it's not a general thing, which, yeah, makes the combat more tactical. Speaking of abilities, there are a lot, just like in any other TCG. The 5 most common ones though are Jump, which lets you jump over opponent's creatures, Conquest, lets you gain control of the enemy's lands, Charge, lets your creatures cross several lands when moving, Range Attack, attacking from a distance, and Aquatic. That's the ability of probably the most mobile creatures in this game, since they can fight and advance over water. Let's talk about what you can do with your creatures. Once you summon a creature on the map, it goes into sleeping mode, meaning that unless your creature has the ability haste, it cannot move or attack at the same turn it was summoned. In the next turn, if your creature is still remaining on the map, you will have an energy point. You could choose whether you would keep your creature at the same location or spend your energy point and move it. Normally, creatures can only move one hex tile in any direction that's valid for movement. However, there are certain abilities and events that allow you to travel even further distances. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that if there are any enemies around where your creature is landing, he will attempt to attack it straight away something that you should keep in mind, especially if the enemy has strike back, which will return you some damage. Another thing you can do with your energy point is to trigger your card abilities if it has any. For example, a miner can gain one gold if he is on a mountain land. And don't forget that each of your spawned creatures and structures have energy points, so manage them accordingly. 
I guess that tops off some of the things you need to remember once you're playing the game for the first time. After that, you just get used to everything with ease. Now I want to review you the other side of the coin about this game, because just like any other game, Feria ain't perfect. We can't even expect that, since it's in closed beta, but it's definitely, I repeat, it's definitely not for everyone. Quite frankly, if you never liked playing chess, for example, chances are you're not going to like this game. Maybe if you truly adore playing Magic the Gathering, you will have any chances to stick with it, but this game is far from being casual. And that's okay, because the developers are aiming for creating a competitive tournament game, meaning that if you simply want to have fun without caring about the result of the game, or without paying too much attention to your actions, you are going to lose, because mistakes in this game get punished so hard that it's better to just surrender once you make a few of them. Yes, comebacks do happen quite a lot, but I'm talking about serious mistakes when you're on your Oh, I had a really bad day today, I don't care about anything and I just want to have fun mode. Making a mistake then is like having your queen captured by a pawn. That's anti-fun. So, if you ever go into that mode, as a lot of people are nowadays, you should definitely consider playing another game. In the end of the day, it's a matter of taste. And don't get me wrong. Everything that I said so far is definitely not a bad thing. I just think that this could be the potential reason why a lot of people, or simply calling them the mass, may not continue playing it once they tried it. No matter how great the game is or ever will be. If we refer to the mobile world, I can say that Feria will be something in between Dota 2 and Heroes of New Earth. You get my point, it's definitely not going to be League of Legends. Now, onto the stuff I don't like about this game, Feria is currently a Flash-based browser game, which has its general flashy flaws. The developers do promise to come up with a standalone version of their game, but it seems that's not going to happen anytime soon, even though they say they are already testing it on their private servers. Speaking of flaws, in many of my games so far, I was either getting visual glitches or disappearing unclickable objects, so I had to refresh the page at least for once, which takes time, especially when you need to log in again. The interface of the menu, when you are not in an active game, is not very user-friendly. Quite frankly, it's horrible. Yes. Once you are matched against someone, your action palette, time cycles, mac cards, etc. are acceptable and easy to understand, but I'm talking about the interface when it comes to purchasing new packs of cards, for example. Once you figure out how to do that, a message pops up and you have to click it, so you get a list of the cards received, where you need to click each one of them to view them all. Not to mention that when it comes to combining your own deck for the first time, you'd have to destroy your mouse with clicking. If you want to refer back to a card and see what it does, you again need to click it. The search function only works for names, meaning that you cannot search for a card effects or anything else other than the name of the card, for that matter, being not even remotely useful to the new players. As they will try to find the card they just got crushed by, but they only remember what the card actually did and not the perky name no real newbie cares about. Still, you can blame all of that on the flash concept and the closed beta phase. Now, onto the things that are not really Flash related. The packs of cards themselves, especially the starting ones, are indeed telling you the amount of cards you are going to get and explains you the playstyle of each representative color, but they don't tell you whether the preconstructed selection of cards is always the same, allowing you to purchase them more than once, and when you do that, you are left with a bunch of extra cards that you have no idea what you can do with, since you are only allowed to hold 3 cards of the same type and no information about disenchanting, or anything for that matter. I wanted to have 3 Roses of Astar, for example, which might be noobish, but I find it to be very annoying card for the enemies, so I had to purchase a pack of multiple times, because you can't buy a card separately from the shop, although you may apparently buy cards from other people, but it seems it always gave me the same cards, but in a different amounts. So now I have 9 Flying Mantas, 9 Sandstorms, 
nine meditations, six assassins, and god knows how many other repetitive cards, when I can only use three in a single deck. And I still don't know what the hell am I gonna do with the extra cards. I would probably check it on the forums after I'm done with my first look review. The second, and surprisingly the final thing, which I didn't like, was the lack of effort in making the initial quests, where you receive your first starter pack. Yes, they're supposed to be tutorials, but they felt repetitive and the objectives were nothing special. Also, 40% of the times you could just enter, move, attack without actually playing the game as you're supposed to against real players. They could have implemented some storylines or more dynamic AIs. I don't know, maybe I was expecting a little bit too much. But anyway, that's about it. Those are the only two things that I didn't like so far. Everything else is just some technical stuff, which I'm pretty sure that it's going to be sorted out once the standalone version is released. In the end, I would like to give special thanks to Josie Pseudo Haworth from MMOBuff.tv for providing me with a beta key for this amazing game. I'm definitely adding Theria to my list of favorite games, and I'm so excited to see how this game evolves, and I'll be happy to see it become an official sport. By the way, Theria has a currently ongoing Kickstarter page, so feel free to find more information about the game there and support them. I'll put the link in the description. Anyways, that's pretty much all for now guys. Feel free to post your comments below, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more content like this. My name is Diamond, stay safe until our next meeting.